Welcome back. Today we're navigating the strategic realms of one of history's most renowned treatises on warfare and strategy, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. In this exploration, we'll be delving into seven essential principles extracted from this ancient text. For each principle, we won't merely be discussing its origin within the book, but we'll also provide clarity on why Sun Tzu emphasized its importance and how it materialized in historical contexts. But most intriguingly, we'll adapt these millennia-old strategies to contemporary scenarios, revealing how you can employ them in your everyday life. Prepare yourself for a journey that merges the past with the present, uncovering timeless wisdom that still resonates in today's world. Let's begin. From the early teachings of Sun Tzu's revered classic, The Art of War, we encounter a principle that not only underpins military tactics, but also resonates profoundly with our everyday choices and decisions. Sun Tzu professed, the general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few calculations beforehand. Beyond the realm of warfare, this highlights the essential nature of planning and foresight in any endeavor. It isn't a mere game of numbers. It's about the depth and wisdom of anticipation and preparation. Historically, this principle was vividly illustrated during the Battle of Normandy in 1944. The Allied forces, comprising British, American, and Canadian troops, meticulously planned their invasion of Nazi-occupied France. Codenamed Operation Overlord, the months leading up to D-Day saw an exhaustive series of reconnaissance missions, dummy operations, and comprehensive training sessions. The Allies even went as far as deploying deceptive strategies to mislead German forces about the actual landing zones. This intense preparation was a significant factor in the Allies' success, allowing them to secure a foothold in Europe and ultimately push towards Germany. Such victories are testament to Sun Tzu's belief. Victory is often secured before the battle even begins, in the meticulous preparations and strategies laid out beforehand. Consider an analogy from our daily lives. Embarking on a road trip, it's unlikely one would start this journey without scrutinizing the route, gauging the weather, inspecting the vehicle, or ensuring there's enough sustenance. A journey devoid of planning can quickly devolve into a series of missteps, delays, or even mishaps. Similarly, when charting the course for a new project or a personal ambition, crafting a well-thought-out plan is pivotal. This means anticipating challenges, setting clear goals, and preparing for any hiccups along the way. Like Sun Tzu's sagacious general, it's the preparation done before the actual task that often delineates success from failure. In essence, just as military tactics hinge on timely and meticulous planning, our endeavors too require a blueprint. Strategic planning. Always start with a plan, whether it's for a project, a career path, or personal growth. Then next, we unearth a timeless principle that extends far beyond the theater of combat, the invaluable nature of understanding oneself and those one interacts with. Sun Tzu advises, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. While this was written with adversaries in war in mind, its wisdom transcends the battlefield. At its core, it emphasizes the power and necessity of introspection, paired with astute observation of others. History provides us a myriad of examples that underline this axiom. One such instance is the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. President John F. Kennedy and his advisors, faced with the dire threat of nuclear missiles in Cuba, had to not only understand their own strategic and geopolitical positions, but also deduce the motivations and constraints of Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. It was this deep understanding of both self and the enemy that enabled a peaceful resolution to one of the most dangerous standoffs of the 20th century. In everyday contexts, consider the dynamics of a job interview. A candidate who recognizes their strengths and areas of growth and also keenly gauges the needs and culture of the company stands a far better chance of succeeding. It's not merely about selling oneself, but understanding the terrain of interaction. In personal relationships too, recognizing one's needs, boundaries, and emotions, while simultaneously attuning to those of the partner, forms the bedrock of mutual understanding and harmony. This principle's essence, it isn't just about mere awareness, but profound understanding. Knowledge of self and others. 
the compass guiding our interactions, negotiations, and personal evolution. Diving deeper into the art of war, another principle emerges, echoing across both battlefields and boardrooms, the indispensable quality of adaptability. Sun Tzu wisely states, in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and to strike at what is weak. This isn't merely a strategy for confrontation, but an ode to fluidity and flexibility. It's the recognition that rigidity in the face of changing circumstances is a precursor to failure. Instead, successful strategies demand nimbleness, a willingness to pivot when necessary. The historic Battle of Agincourt in 1415, part of the larger backdrop of the Hundred Years' War, saw King Henry V of England and his forces cornered on foreign soil, grossly outnumbered by the French. Yet, it was in this dire scenario that strategy and adaptability became their lifeline. The English relied heavily on their longbowmen, whose weapons held significant range and power advantages over the French crossbows, allowing devastating volleys from a distance. But the real game changer was the environment. Following heavy rainfall, the battlefield became a muddy trap. French knights, laden in armor, charged across this treacherous terrain, only to be ensnared by the muck. Many became sitting ducks for English archers, while others were immobilized, succumbing to the weight of their armor and the sodden earth. Through a combination of strategic weapon use and environmental advantage, what could have been an English disaster transformed into a decisive victory. In our contemporary world, think about businesses navigating the digital transformation. Those who clung to outdated models found themselves faltering, while the ones that adapted, embracing e-commerce, digital marketing, or new service models, flourished. Adaptability isn't just a business strategy, it's a survival mechanism. In personal life too, whether facing unexpected challenges or navigating shifts in personal relationships, the ability to adapt and pivot can mean the difference between growth and stagnation. And so, as we navigate the ever-evolving challenges of our world, one principle stands tall. Value of adaptability. Be flexible in your approach, ready to change tactics when current ones aren't working. Delving further into the book, we come across a tenet that rings true from ancient battlegrounds to contemporary boardrooms, the perils of drawn-out conflicts. Sun Tzu sagely observes, there is no instance of a country having benefited from prolonged warfare. The essence of this council is clear. Extended confrontations, whether on the field or elsewhere, exhaust resources, erode morale, and often result in pyrrhic victories. Instead of being trapped in a quagmire, wisdom dictates seeking timely resolution or an alternative course of action. Reflect on the prolonged Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, which spanned over 27 years. While both sides had their moments of glory, the extended nature of the conflict resulted in devastating losses, political upheaval, and an eventual weakening of both powers, leaving them vulnerable to external forces. In today's context, businesses mired in prolonged litigation or locked in market battles can bear witness to this principle. Not only do they experience financial drains, but employee morale, stakeholder trust, and brand reputation may suffer. On a personal note, Consider the strains of unresolved conflicts in relationships or friendships. Over time, without resolution, they can lead to emotional exhaustion and might irreparably damage the bond. It's often wiser to find common ground, compromise, or sometimes take a new path altogether. In navigating life's challenges, this insight remains paramount. Avoid prolonged conflict, the wisdom of conserving resources and fostering longevity in endeavors. Navigating further through the wisdom of Sun Tzu, we encounter an enduring maxim applicable from military fortifications to boardroom negotiations. The imperative of strategic positioning, Sun Tzu articulates, position yourself where you are strongest and your enemy weakest. This isn't solely about physical terrain, but underlines the broader principle of leveraging one's strengths and taking advantage of favorable situations while being acutely aware of vulnerabilities. In 216 BC, the Battle of Cannae became a touchstone in military strategy during the Second Punic War. Rome, boasting numerical superiority, anticipated a clear victory over the Carthaginian forces led by the ingenious Hannibal Barca. Yet, Hannibal astutely positioned his troops in a crescent formation, formidable units on the flanks and more mobile ones in the center. As the Romans advanced, they found themselves funneled into this formation 
getting trapped as Hannibal's sides curved inwards, enveloping them. This brilliant use of terrain and troop strengths led to a devastating Roman defeat, marking Cannae as an exemplary demonstration of strategic positioning and warfare. In the realm of modern business, think of companies like Apple or Netflix, which have consistently positioned themselves at the forefront of technological innovation and changing consumer preferences. Their strategic placements within their respective markets have allowed them to dominate and set industry standards. Similarly, on a personal level, whether attending a networking event, navigating social circles, or selecting a career path, understanding one's strengths and placing oneself in advantageous situations can be the key to unlocking myriad opportunities. As we plot our courses in various arenas of life, one principle stands as a beacon. Utilize strategic positioning, the art of maximizing potential by aligning strengths with opportunities. As we delve even further, we discover a principle that holds relevance in every facet of life, from ancient reconnaissance missions to today's digital data-driven age. The paramount importance of gathering information, Sun Tzu emphasizes, if you know the enemy and know yourself, your victory will not stand in doubt. This isn't just about understanding one's own capabilities and that of the adversary. It's about gathering as much information as possible to shape strategy and decisions. It underscores the value of knowledge as a formidable weapon. An illustrative example from history can be seen in the Battle of Normandy during World War II. The Allied forces engaged in extensive reconnaissance and intelligence gathering, from deciphering encrypted messages to aerial photography. This vast pool of information was pivotal in strategizing the D-Day landings and played a crucial role in its success. In the modern landscape, businesses heavily rely on market research, analytics, and customer feedback to guide their strategies. They understand that in an ever-evolving marketplace, staying informed is the linchpin to staying relevant. On a personal front, whether it's making investment decisions, choosing a travel destination, or even selecting a school or course, Research and information gathering ensure that our decisions are well informed and not left to mere chance. In shaping our paths, be it in warfare, business, or personal endeavors, a guiding principle remains. Gather information, the foundation upon which insightful decisions and effective strategies are built. Finally, as we traverse the deep wisdom of the art of war, a principle emerges that's as much about restraint as it is about action the discernment to act only under the most favorable conditions. Sun Tzu wisely posits, he who knows when he can fight, and when he cannot, will be victorious. This doesn't merely advocate for action, but underscores the importance of timely action, of understanding the landscape and seizing the moment only when circumstances are most propitious. Consider the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC during the Greco-Persian Wars. The Persian Empire, vast and powerful, sought to expand its territories by invading the smaller city-states of Greece. Landing at Marathon with a formidable force, they expected a swift victory. However, the Athenian general Miltiades, understanding the strength of the Persian archers and the disadvantages hoplites would face in a direct assault, chose not to engage immediately. Instead, he waited, drawing his forces into a strategic formation with strengthened flanks. When the moment was favorable, the Athenians charged, utilizing the terrain to shield themselves from archer fire. The wings of Miltiades' formation swiftly outflanked and routed the Persian wings, leading to a significant Athenian victory. Rather than succumbing to the urgency of the moment, Miltiades exemplified the principle. To act only when conditions are most favorable. In contemporary times, successful businesses demonstrate this by strategically choosing when to launch a new product capitalizing on market trends or waiting out economic downturns. For individuals, it might mean waiting for the right time to buy a house, switch careers, or even start a family, always ensuring the conditions are optimal. Life is not just about taking action, but taking informed, timely action. As our exploration comes to a close, the final beacon guiding our path shines clear. Act only when favorable. The art of merging patience with precision for optimal outcomes. We've journeyed through the intricate pathways of Sun Tzu's wisdom, touching on seven key principles from the art of war. It's truly remarkable how these age-old strategies can find relevance even in today's context. Whether it's for personal growth, leadership, 
or understanding life's battles, there's a lesson in it for all of us. I hope you leave with a fresh perspective and tools that can be applied in your daily life. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you liked what you saw, a like would mean the world to me. It helps support the channel and lets me know you want to see more content like this. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.